It's interesting to think of how different landscapes would look if certain creatures didn't go extinct. Smilodon would still roam North America, and bears and wolves would still have a home in the UK. Although it is interesting to learn about creatures that are no longer with us, we should be thankful for the creatures that still are. Many creatures that roamed the world today were once very close to extinction. Through protection and captive breeding, some have been able to bounce back, but others are still in a perilous situation. In this video, I will be focusing on Europe, as I'll be going through five European animals that almost went extinct. And our first species is the red kite. Now this bird is a medium to large sized bird of prey, with a wingspan of up to 1.8 meters. These birds inhabit broadleafed woodlands, as well as valleys and wetland edges. In these areas they feed on a wide range of foods, but are mostly known for being opportunistic feeders, and will happily feed on carrion. This bird's coloration makes it very popular with bird watchers, but they're also known for their iconic screeches. Although these birds are still relatively rare in some areas, it used to be a lot worse. German populations declined 25 to 30 percent between 1991 and 1997, and in Spain their population declined 43 percent in a similar period of time. Although this sounds bad enough, their situation was far worse up north. Red kites were almost eradicated in the whole of the UK by the early 1900s, apart from just a few pairs that clung on to whales. This decline was blamed on a number of factors, such as habitat loss, egg collection and hunting. But luckily back in 1990, red kites were reintroduced back into the UK. Natural England and the RSPB worked together to reintroduce breeding pairs of red kites into the Chilterns. This was only shortly after the new M40 was built, and although this motorway may not seem beneficial at first, it actually provided these red kites with roadkill. 13 red kites were reintroduced, and by 1996 at least 37 pairs were breeding in southern England. Since this reintroduction they have thrived, and they are now thought to be the 1,800 breeding pairs. Red kites are now one of the UK's fastest increasing species, and today they still remain one of the greatest conservation success stories. But our next species is the European bison. Now when most people think of bison, they think of the American species. The European bison is the only other species, and there are a few subtle differences between the two. European bison are taller on average, but American bison tend to be heavier on average. European bison predominantly feed on grasses, and a male can consume up to 32 kilograms of food a day. This colossal diet it helps it to become the largest land animal in Europe but it's thought that in the past they may have been even larger than their modern day descendants, as well as looking very similar to their American cousins. They also share a very similar story. They were once found in massive herds spanning the continent, but were hunted almost to extinction. In fact, they went extinct in the wild in 1919, but luckily there were a few remaining in captivity. The species survived only thanks to 54 animals that were kept in various different zoos. Through captive breeding, their numbers slowly increased, and in 1954, the first bison were released back into the wild in a forest in Poland. Today their population has increased substantially, and there are thought to be around 7,500 European bison that exist today. Out of this population, 4,000 are free roaming in the wild, and there are thought to be many reintroductions to come, so hopefully we can see many more of these majestic creatures in the wild in the future. But our next species is the Eurasian Spoonbill. This bird is a medium-sized wading bird, which is part of the Ibis and Spoonbill family. Of course these birds are found in wetland habitats, and they have a few adaptations that help them survive in these areas. They have very long slim legs that help them keep their bodies above the waterline, and of course they have a very large spoon shaped bill. They use this bill to catch their prey, which in most cases is aquatic invertebrates and small fish. They feed with elegant sideward sweeps of their bill, which is the perfect way to root out their prey. Although this bird can be found in many healthy wetlands across Europe today, this wasn't always the case. Their population declined dramatically after the 19th century, mostly as a result of habitat loss. This was caused mainly by the drainage of wetlands, and without their wetland habitats, the adaptations of this very specialised bird were rendered useless. Luckily after conservation of wetland habitats and nesting sites, this species was able to recover after a dramatic decline, and today it's thought their European population is around 10,000 to 15,000 pairs. They have also recently started breeding in the UK again, after vanishing from this area around 300 years ago. If you're in the UK and you want to find some of these majestic birds, one of the best places you can spot them is Holcombe National Nature Reserve, and this is also a great site for spotting other wildlife. I'm sure many bird watchers are thankful that this bird has recovered in European wetlands. But our next species is the Eurasian lynx. The Eurasian lynx is a medium sized wildcat that today has quite a wide distribution. The Eurasian lynx is the largest of the four species of lynx and is the third largest predator in Europe, and this is only behind the wolf and the brown bear. These cats are predominantly forest dwellers and prove to be very elusive. They are very rarely seen or heard and can go about mostly undetected. In these 
these forests, they are of course predators, mostly feeding on small ungulates, but will also take smaller prey such as hares and rabbits. Although they have made a dramatic recovery today, these cats were considered extinct in nearly the whole of Central Europe for 200 years. One of the main factors that led to their decline was habitat loss, and when humans encroached on their territories, they had nowhere else to go. This led to many lynx hunting livestock, and in most cases this didn't end very well for the lynx. But thanks to reintroductions and captive breeding, the Eurasian lynx has made a dramatic recovery. They were reintroduced into most of their former range, and their population increased from around 700 between 1930 and 1950 to around 10,000 individuals in Europe today. Although this is a very uplifting success story, another lynx is in a far more perilous situation. The Iberian lynx is a lynx endemic to the Iberian Peninsula, and is currently listed as endangered. In the 20th century, the lynx population had declined, mainly due down to the same factors that affected the Eurasian lynx. This cat was arguably closer to extinction, with there only thought to be 94 existing in 2002. But luckily, just like the Eurasian lynx, it was given significant protection, and through captive breeding and reintroductions, the Iberian lynx's population is back to over a thousand today. If you want to help out the Iberian lynx, I've left a donation link in the description below, and hopefully they'll continue to bounce back. So both these cat stories just go to prove that through dedicated conservation we can save endangered species. But our next species is the Orcrox. Now to finish this video off, instead of including a creature that almost went extinct, I've included a creature that actually went extinct. The Orcrox was an extinct cattle species, which is thought to be the wild ancestor of all modern domesticated cattle. It stood at around 1.8 meters at the shoulder and was one of the largest herbivores in the Holocene. It had massive elongated horns that reached 80 centimeters in length and very few predators dared to take it on. It's thought that the last individual of this species went extinct in 1627 in a forest in Poland. It had been declining during the late Holocene, mainly due down to habitat loss and hunting. It was relentlessly hunted by humans and really stood little chance. But even though this species is long gone, there are some people that are trying to bring it back. As the Orcrox is the ancestor of all cattle, not only is it one of the most important animals in the history of mankind, but its DNA also still lives in other creatures. Some of the the original ancient cattle breeds still share its DNA, and through backbreeding, the Taurus program is trying to bring back the original Aurochs. The Taurus is now thought to be its closest descendant, and this cow has been reintroduced into Portugal and the Danube Delta. So even though this cattle is long gone, a very similar looking relative still roams Europe today. If you know of any other animals that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for any other videos, also let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these but until next time goodbye